media that are coming in uh, in front of our student athletes, NCAA policy is uh, to have a mask and, and when, when student athletes are up here. We have masks on that table, but again, we, we appreciate your cooperation. All right, at this time, we introduce the uh, Rutgers Scarlet Knights as uh, Caleb McConnell, closest to me, Ron Harper Jr. Uh, in the middle with Geo Baker, and then on the end is uh, the head coach, Steve Peichel. Coach, as we start our press conference, just a statement on your basketball team here this evening. Um, yeah. It was uh, just a tough one tonight. Um, <laughs> I love, I love my team. Uh, they've been a special group. Uh, <clears throat> we had an unbelievable season. I mean, a historic run, actually. And these guys here, you know, turned this program around. And I said to them in the locker room, I wish I could coach them forever. This group has 30 years of coaching, just a special group. And you saw them today. I mean, they fought. And that's what they're made of. They really are. I mean, it was just a tough game, tip of the hat. N Notre Dame was one possession better. They're, they're a really good team. Obviously, Coach Bray is a terrific coach. I congratulate them. But, uh, you know, this group has been unbelievable for three years, um, three straight NCAA tournaments. You know, I just wish it would n never end. These guys have given everything, you know, to our program. and. Uh, they deserve to continue to play, but uh, no, it's tough. It's just a tough, you know, tough night, you know, for us after playing the way we played and fought the whole time. But uh, they were one possession better. We uh, open up the floor now for questioning for our student athletes. Let's start in the back. Uh, Zach Brazilla, New York Post. Geo, the end of regulation, you had that shot there. And kind of after it came up short like so you kind of grabbed your your head and kind of I guess just frustrated that you had the chance to end it there yeah I just thought I got a good look um, you know I've made that shot a couple times in my career so um, felt like it was going in came up a little short For first row yeah Jerry Carino from Gannett New Jersey guys uh, any of you can answer this any or all uh, what what was it like to play in a game of that epic nature, and 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 what are the emotions right now of everything you've accomplished and to have this this uh, this run you know finish like this in this crazy fashion? It's a lot of pain right now. Um, you know we've been through some real battles. You know us three, uh, Luke. You know everybody on the team, Ralph. Um, you know it's just it's a lot of pain right now. I don't even really know what to say. I think uh, Caleb said it best in the locker room, you know, just telling these guys to cherish this moment, you know, cherish college basketball, um, you know, because it feels like we were just freshmen yesterday. Um, you know, we got a special brotherhood now that's never, that's never going to change, that's never going to end. Um, just a lot of emotions right now, but playing in that game was, you know, special. That's what March is about. You know, we just came up short. What are the third row? Steve Politi from NJ.com. Uh, just for Ron and Gio, wh what were the thoughts at the, at the very end? I mean, just to, to participate in this game and just to have it come down to the wire like that, did, were you stunned? Were you for? How do you feel? And, and uh, I mean, it was just a, a great game. You know, we came up a little bit short. I mean, like the emotions at the end, it was just heartbreaking to see it all unfold like that, you know. Uh, the people next to me up here, we, we sacrificed a whole lot to get where we are today. And for it to 
come down toward them like that. It's just it's just upsetting. It's, it's devastating. It's heartbreaking. It's all the above. So, yeah. Try to get seen from the night report. A question for everybody: back to back years going out in such a heartbreaking fashion. What does that say about the NCAA tournament? You know, it's March Madness. You know, that's how that's how it goes down every year. You know, there's games just like just like that, night in and night out, and that's what makes it so special. You know, it just sucks to be on the <coughs> on the wrong end of it. Bobby Garrett, twenty four seven sports. Caleb, this is your hometown. Uh, you had a big first half. Just talk about the emotions and, and playing here and everything that just happened. Um, of course, it's a very emotional game. Just coming back home and being able to play in front of friends and family, which I want to thank them for coming out. But uh, it, it it wasn't even about me tonight, honestly. It was just, it was just about, more about our team. Um, of course, they wanted to win for us and for me. But um, like I said, it's very emotional. Uh, we just were obviously very upset. We came on the wrong end of it. But um, I mean, it's just it, um, as you see, we're very emotional now, and it's just it's just sad that we had to end it this way. Um, for like we built so much, just take basketball, take statistics, and all that stuff out the window. Just, just the stuff we did here, just the brotherhood we built, the friendships we built with each other. It's just, it's gonna last forever. But it's just, it's just sucked it had to end this way. But everything has come to an end. But I know, and I'm just, I'm just glad that I was able to do it with these guys, cause I mean, these guys are amazing. Our, our whole team, like we transfers, whatever, um, just just from, from, from top to bottom, man. So we are, we're just, we're just a, a good group of kids. And um, like I said, it, it just wasn't about me tonight. Um, even though my team wanted to win for me, obviously, since I'm back home. But uh, it's bigger than that. It's bigger than basketball. And, and like I said, it's just, it just sucks that it had to end this way. Just a couple more questions for our student athletes. We'll go to Aaron on Zoom. Aaron, your question. Uh, Aaron Brightman on the banks. Um, this is for Ron. Um, you know, you've talked in the past about the importance of representing New Jersey and, and showing kids that, you know, Rutgers is a place that you can go to the NCAA tournament. How proud are you of the way this team has performed and just, you know, been able to do what you've done the last couple of years, despite the loss, um, you know, playing the, the way you have? Uh, yeah, I wanted to kind of be the kid that started a trend, you know, go to Rutgers, you can go to the NCAA tournament. And I feel like, uh, I did a good job of that, but it would have never been possible without the guys to my left, to my right, the guys in that locker room. Um, growing up, all I ever wanted was somebody to respect me, somebody to tell me I'm good enough. And I found that here at Rutgers, you know. Uh, I found a group of guys that believed in me, that trusted me, and that's all I could ever ask for, man. Uh, these guys made me the player I am today. These guys made me an All-American. These guys got me all those individual accolades. And it, Sucks that I had to end like this, but you know, I love these guys. Like Caleb says, unbreakable brotherhood. And we started something special up here. It's kind of like sitting next to the like the three pioneers. You know, we did it three years in a row. I don't care what anybody says. COVID happened, we would have been right there in the mix. So we did that three years in a row, and not a lot of schools can say that they did that, especially not making it for 30 years. So I'm proud of the culture that we built. I'm proud of everything that we did. It sucks that we came up short, but. These last four years is something I'll remember for the rest of my life and I'll cherish and I'll hold close to me. All right, two more questions for our student athletes. Uh, first row. Gary Carino from Gannett, New Jersey. Guys, what do you want to say to Rutgers fans who have become so invested in this team in, in a way which never really happened before? Thank you. None of this is ever possible without the fans. They made the Jersey Mike's Arena one of the hardest places in the country to play at. And we're just so grateful for them. Ever since I stepped on this campus my freshman year, they've been all all aboard on Rutgers basketball. And you know, uh, I, I hope we made them proud. I know we came up short today, but we put our we put our heart and soul on the line for this university for that block R that we wear proudly. And we just want to thank them for all the support. You know, all the ups and downs they kept showing up. So you know, we love the fans, and none of this is ever possible without them. All right, last question for our student athletes, right here. Ron Fonseca, NJ.com. Uh, Ron, Caleb, I know you guys just came off an emotional game. You're not thinking about your future right now, but there's some finality to the way you guys are talking. Is this the end for you guys? Is, are you guys calling it a college career after tonight? I mean, right now, I'm worried about right now. Let's see. Yeah, I don't know. I, I have no idea. I don't know what the future holds. Um, so um, they're going to have a lot of opportunities to do a lot of different things, but I don't know if today is right now is the time to, you know, after a game like that to be 
you know, talking about those kind of things. But I appreciate these guys, what they've given to our program and what they've given to our university. They're just great, they're great students, they're great people. And um, you saw them fight tonight. And um, it's, not, it's not easy, the whole season, back against the wall a lot of times. And they just did nothing but respond. And today, you know, proud. You know, we were two points short and double overtime to a good Notre Dame team. Uh, but these guys have laid it on the line for a long time. And they came to Rutgers when Rutgers wasn't you know, fashionable. And they built a culture that's terrific. And they'll have a lot of decisions when you're good like they are. They'll have a lot of decisions to make down the road. So they'll make great ones. They got great families. And they got a great, you know, support system. Ron, Gio, uh, Caleb, uh, out outstanding. Uh, congratulations uh, on a terrific season. And uh, you gentlemen are, are, are allowed to leave, but uh, thank you again for that performance in the arena. Thank you, appreciate it. Thanks, I appreciate y'all. All right, we, we will uh, we'll, we'll open the floor now to, to, to head coach uh, Steve Peichel as uh, let's go in the back, uh, fourth row. Zach Brazil in your post. Steve, when you look at the, the defensive end tonight, 58 points in the paint, 51% shooting, was it more of just Notre Dame pl played really well, or do you think your defense wasn't what it usually is? Yeah, I think we played really well too, um, but um, we tried to take away threes. I thought we did a decent job of that, but they got into the paint, they finished some plays, but they want to shoot threes is what they really want to do, but it wasn't our regular defense, it wasn't. Um, we didn't get any kills. That's three stops in a row. We usually get a lot of them during the course of a game. But, uh, you know, we needed a big stop at the end. We didn't get it. Uh, but we had some other big plays during the course of the game that could have changed the tide. But this is college basketball this year. It's been like that for us all year long, two-point games, one-possession games. You know, proud the way our team played. That's a good team. They played well, too. I thought we played well. This may be the best game of the whole tournament. Um, and it was played high-level basketball game. It's a high-level program in Notre Dame, and we're a high-level program. Let's go to the third row. Steve, hi, Steve Politi, NJ.com. I can't remember a more gutting press conference. I'm, I'm just wondering if what the emotion was like in that locker room, and how, as a coach, you know, do you handle that? What did you say to them after this one? Yeah, I mean, I just told, I've been saying this all year. This is 30 years of coaching. I've never had a group like this. They've been, I mean. We didn't have a bad day of practice in the whole year. I mean, this group has been flat out special. It's by far my best team, by far my best team. And uh, since I've been at Rutgers, um, they've given it. They've played with their backs to the wall. We're playing the best league in the country. We had to win games down the stretch. We had to win early games. And, uh, you know, it was really tough. Ralph's been great, came in and gave us Luke Nathan. Don't talk about him enough and what he's given to the program, gave him a scholarship. Um, that's how valuable I thought he was. A locker room, obviously, Gio coming back and Ron coming back and, you know, Caleb taking himself from being a, a player that's, you know, one of the best defenders in the country and obviously saw him being able to score today. Um, and Paul Mulcahy, three, three years he's been with us. We, we hadn't been to the NCAA tournament in 30 years, hadn't won a game in 38 years, and he's gone to three straight. Um, Cliff getting better and better. You know, but in our bench too, the guys have just been great. They don't complain. They come to work. It's the toughest league in the country. Tough game today, but it was it was sad. It was a sad locker room, and um, they put it all on the line. They fought the whole time, and that's what this group has done for three years. They fought, and uh, I'm proud of them. You know, for that. But uh, Coach Calhoun reminds me all the time: only one team's going to leave this March Madness happy. Fortunately. I think this team, I want to coach this team forever. So, S sad locker room. We're running out of time here, but let, let's let's go to the third row. Uh, Craig Epstein, the night, the night report. Uh, Steve, after such a crazy game like that, what's your message to the Rutgers fan base? I mean, the Rutgers fan base been awesome. And if they can't root for this team, this is as good a group of guys and a good team. And the Rutgers fan base is awesome. So, mm, I think they're real proud of where this program is evolved to. We were 14th when I first took over the job. We didn't have any winning streaks, didn't have any postseason bids, didn't have any of that. And they've done an unbelievable job, finished fourth in the best league in the country. 
So um, our fan base has been great. I got a great athletic director who supports us, and it's a great job. The president of the university supports us, and you know, and uh, we're going to continue to be a good basketball program, and we'll continue to work hard as a staff. Our players will continue to develop. We've done as good a job developing guys as any program, I think, in the country, and uh, you know. Rutgers Nation will be there. They'll be selling out games at Jersey Mike's and continue that tradition. So thankful for following. Uh, Aaron, your question to Coach. Aaron Brightman on the banks. Coach, I, I know it's um, a tough moment, but I, I did want to ask just in terms of the three seniors, uh, Caleb, Ron, and Gio, um, you know, how proud are you of them just in terms of, you know, how they went out swinging? They all had huge moments in this game and obviously to, to end their career, uh, potentially end, end their careers, um, but just the way that they played tonight and, and indicative of their whole careers at, at Rutgers. Yeah, it really is indicative of their whole careers. And, you know, thankful too for Ralph and, and Luke Nathan. They were awesome too. But um, those guys have, you know, from day one, you know, swung punches. Gio was the 400th ranked recruit in the country. No one expected him to even play in the Big Ten. He ended up having an elite career. Um, Dean's a student. Ron, I mean, he's an All-American. Caleb, the defensive player of the year in the league. So um, those guys just kept improving. Um, they kept fighting for the program. They kept fighting for themselves. They come from great families. Um, so, you know, real proud, real proud. And their best basketball is ahead of them, too. That's what I'm most proud of. They're going to continue to do great things in basketball. First double overtime game in first four history. Coach, I know you're on a losing end, but that was a tremendous performance by your team. Congratulations on a great season. Thank you so much. Thank you guys for being here, too. Appreciate it.